Welcome back to the sideboard here at SCG Columbus. My name is Ruben Bressler and I am joined by John Johnson, who is no stranger to the sideboard, having created some wild decks in the past. Uh, you're the progenitor of the Werewolf Stompy deck in yep. Legacy that picked yep. up a little bit of steam. Uh, any others off the top of your head that you can think of? Uh, nothing super crazy, just uh, Blood Hall Lose and Modern. Right, Blood Hall Lose yeah. yeah, right, yeah. and Modern. Bubbling Muck in Legacy, I think, was you. I, I, yeah, I Bubbling Muck. I played Mono Black ones. Belcher. There you go. Mono That's Black Belcher one. with Culling the Week. This is another one yeah. that we've got here. This is like Black Green Pack Rat in Legacy. Yeah. Which is pretty wild. Pack Rat. It's the most powerful. It's the most powerful card in Standard, two, may two, as well. Two drop in the, in the at format? All? At all? You think it's the most powerful two drop in the format? Time Walk's better. Fair but, enough. That's not that's not in the legacy format. Not, Talk to not. me about why Pack Rat's so good in legacy. Well, if you can protect it with your host of discard spells like Inquisitions, Thought Ceases, Liliana, stuff like that, you can get a Pack Rat out. If they don't immediately have an answer to it, or if you get up to five mana, just like you've seen in standard, they really no one's playing detention spheres, no one's playing supreme verdicts. So there's this natural predator and standard that just doesn't exist in Legacy at all. Yeah, the elimination suite in Legacy is like bolt and swords. Yeah, more efficient their answers. So they can, if they have a couple of them, they can get you. But uh, like I said, you're trying to eliminate the ability for them to be able to do that. Another card that is able to put a lot of tokens into play very quickly mm -hmm. is Bitter Blossom. Yep. Another card that is very popular in past formats, doesn't see play in Legacy, but no. you decided to bring it here as well. Yeah, I did. I uh, said uh, part of the reason this deck is put together is for the uh, steady stream of tokens that come out of both Pack Rat and Bitter Blossom. So, you want to talk about this next one? That's right, and yeah, yeah. one of the best ways to use the tokens. <laughs> Sorry, I was burying the lead here, is Contamination. Sort of back to basics-ish, sort of Blood Moon-ish, but even shuts down more than just that. Contamination is not a card that I think I've ever seen cast in Legacy, <laughs> uh, but it is quite a powerful magic card. Yeah, uh, like I said, most people are playing one, two, three, four, even basics in their deck, so they can play around these Blood Moon decks. Thanks, Ruben. You're welcome. <laughs> So there's all these Blood Moon decks that are running around, and even talks of Mono Blue this weekend. I'm not sure how much in force, but back to basics as a card, as you mentioned. Uh, what Contamination does that those doesn't is it stops all their basic lands. Sure. Uh, at the same time, it still lets me use my Wastelands. It still lets me use my Mutable so I can get aggressive with them. Nice. Absolutely. It, it, it allows... You have so many tokens, and your opponents have so few ways to get rid of all of those tokens, as we right. discussed, that Contamination can often be a hard lock. Yep. against a lot of decks. Uh, you are splashing green in this mostly black deck yep. for Abrupt Decay and Deathrite Shaman. Yeah, they're just uh, really just good cards. Really good cards. Yeah. You need the green to be able to answer certain things. Yeah, the, the Abrupt Decay is, yeah, Abrupt Decay is very, very good against all the equipment that's running around. Like an opposing jit is very hard, for example, to deal with, uh, or like a counterbalance, for example. Uh, just really kind of a catch-all against the things that are going to matter, especially since we're trying to get this hard lock down, or a, a decent presence down by turn three, four maybe. Uh, it just kind of fits into that that niche. And you're trying to get uh, so many tokens into play that you have equipment of your own, of course. Correct. Yeah, I have two main deck Umazawa's Jutes and another one on the board to where I want to bring it in against uh, you know, decks that have a lot of these X1s, X2, Stoneforge decks. Uh, tribal decks, that sort of thing. Speaking of the sideboard, you've got some spicy ones in there as well. Golgari Charm, I think people are used to at this point, having seen it in Shardless Bug. Yeah, yeah, the Golgari Charm's a really good one. Uh, very good against, again, all these X1s, like the Elf deck, uh, True Name Nemesis, that sort of thing. Um, if someone's really playing Supreme Verdict, uh, no. You're able to regenerate Can't, your tokens. You, you can regenerate sure. all your tokens, I, I guess. But uh, <laughs> I, guess, I guess a more reasonable one is like a Maelstrom Pulse that the Jun decks are playing, or a pernicious deed, something like that, Sure, uh, would be able to stop that. Um, yeah, the ability to blow up enchantments, it, it matters, kind of. Detention um, spheres and the like. Yeah, again, that, uh, very few of those being played, again, the draw to be playing pack rat in this format, but... Uh, Mostly in for the instant speed sicken. Uh, yeah, mainly for that, uh, but it's also a very good card if your opponent is playing Leyline of Sanctity. Sure. Uh, as we mentioned, there's quite a bit of discard, and the decks that I would be wanting to board in my additional discard duresses in the sideboard might be running. Uh, they're going to be playing leyline, like sure. the sneak and show decks, that sort of thing. So Phyrexian Revoker is another good catch-all for other permits that you have a little bit of trouble with. Yep, it's uh, very good to put into play off of a show and tell in that matchup. Uh, and another one that's already given me trouble today is Aether Vial. 
uh, the mono white and uh, merfolk both play aether vial in this format, and uh, you can lock them down with contamination. They just keep and putting guys keep into violent, play, and sure. yeah, it's not a, not a good one. Now, another one that's good to put into play off of uh, show and tell. Yeah. There's a little bit of spice in the sideboard. We weren't done with the main deck, and that's flesh bag marauder. Yeah, uh, it's just kind of a catch-all uh, that you can just board it in against the aggressive decks. So you can like you know sack your bitter blossom token, have a three one out of this, and maybe trade up with it. And, but they also sacrifice a guy. Uh, but again, you said show and tell. It's very good if you know that they're going to be putting into play their Gristle Brand or their Emrakul. It's really good. I mean, you can run into situations where they show and tell, and they put in their sneak attack, and you have this flesh bag marauder. You right. look like an idiot. But sure. Or they could put in their Gristle Brand. Yeah. Or, or they put in their Emrakul really, and yeah, yeah. and, and uh, Phyrexian Revoker comes in. But a little bit of a guessing game there. Yeah, yeah. Got to have the read. I guess. Yeah, yeah. But for sure. uh, going forward with this deck, do you think mm -hmm. that this deck could have a place in this metagame? I think it can. It's it's very good against the um, kind of like these Rug Delver type decks, more like the mid range. I don't want to call them mid range, but they're tempo decks, I guess. Where you have these abrupt decays, you have these very efficient answers in the form of Bitter Blossom. Um, the red, white, blue deck that has been popping up uh, runs more answers to something like Pack Rat, uh, so that's going to be a little bit harder of a matchup. But uh, if you if you have the read that maybe your local metagame or your metagame at you know. Star City Open that weekend is going to be, you know, heavily tempo or this kind of mid-range like these uh, true name Stoneforge decks. Uh, then something like this is very good. Yeah, and the other thing that's uh, that's been popping up, especially in the Midwest, mm -hmm. are these new Junk and Jund Depths decks. Yeah. Uh, and making opponents sacrifice their 2020s is quite good. Yeah, yeah. There's Edicts and uh, Liliana to be able to deal with that. Uh, Merit Lages have a really really hard time. Swatting away fairies. Okay. They just get in the way. Just every turn. Yeah, just every turn. There's just a fairy in the way. Yeah, and that's, like, I, I can't move. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just sure. fairies. Well, I'm interested to see where Golgari Packrat can go in this legacy meta game. And yeah. uh, thank you for bringing it over to the sideboard. John Johnson here at the sideboard of SCG Columbus. We'll have more coverage all day long with Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan here on SCG Live.